Back in the late 2000s, I learned of a tool called Selenium that the testers on my team were fairly interested in using. I thought it was a neat idea, but there was one big red flag for me. It required writing the test in the Java programming language. I had taken a couple semesters of Java programming in college and actually enjoyed the object-oriented nature of the language. I had to wrap my head around some of the complexities of language, but overall I found it a useful language to understand. But thinking about writing automated tests in Java gave me pause. Java is a very verbose language requiring a fair amount of setup and tedious amounts of coding. I just didn't think test automation was a good fit for it. So I stopped researching the idea in favor of other impending tasks. Years later, a new tool came out called PhantomJS. It was based in Node.js and promised the ability to automate browser usage. That definitely perked my interest, and I'll explain in a minute, but first, let's look at what is Node.js. You may not be familiar with Node.js, so I'll explain it a little bit here. If you are familiar, feel free to skip this part. JavaScript is the coding language of the web. Starting in the mid-1990s, an early version of JavaScript, originally called LiveScript, was included in the Netscape Navigator browser. Microsoft, eager to match and beat the features of Netscape, saw this new language and decided to add their own version, calling it JScript. As the browser battle continued, JavaScript and JScript continued to grow in popularity among website authors. I recall my first use of JavaScript was to make a mouse trail on my very first website. My second use was to float an animation of Ralph Wiggum eating glue across the screen of my From the Local Police Blotter page. It was dumb, but boy, it was fun to play with. Most JavaScript usage for the next decade revolved around either these cheesy browser effects or useful add-ons like drop-down menus and browser-based form field validation. As a front-end developer, learning JavaScript was an important part of my job, although not a critical part of my job like it is today. In 2009, Ryan Dahl combined Chrome's JavaScript engine, called V8, with a few new tricks, and had it run entirely outside the browser. While the initial idea was to use JavaScript and Node.js to create servers that could better handle high-traffic sites, developers across the globe saw even more power in the tool. From 2009 to 2019, Node.js has grown tremendously. While development of the tool did stagnate around 2014, a fork of Node.js called IOJS kicked those in charge back into gear. Eventually, the two tools were combined to create a better future. And a better future it has become. Node.js has become one of the most popular programming languages out there, and is used for everything from servers to development tools, even desktop applications. PhantomJS's popularity grew as developers realized they now knew how to write code that could automate browsers. Automated testing immediately came to mind, and a sister tool called CasperJS was created to complement PhantomJS. There was only one problem. PhantomJS was a pared-down version of Google Chrome. Sure, it was fast and had a lot of features of a normal browser, but it wasn't the browser that site visitors would be using. You could write all the test automation you wanted, but it still wouldn't catch bugs that only occur in Internet Explorer. Remember, at that time, many websites still needed to support the bug-ridden versions of that browser. So PhantomJS's popularity as a testing tool was always limited. The benefits of automated testing in that single, non-traditional browser just never seemed worth the cost. In 2015, I found out about a tool called WebDriver CSS. It was a visual regression testing tool used to compare two screenshots of a page and see if they're visually different from each other. I had tried many tools like this in the past, but this one was unique. WebDriver CSS was actually a plugin for a library called WebDriver IO. WebDriver IO came with all the great features of PhantomJS, but had the added benefit of supporting Selenium. Remember Selenium, that tool from the mid-2000s that I glossed over because I was a little fearful of Java? WebDriver IO made Selenium approachable to me, and that was literally life-changing. Since investing myself in WebDriver IO, my actual job duties have shifted from primarily front-end development to a focus on front-end testing. There were four selling points that convinced me to use WebDriver IO. It's front-end friendly. Unlike most other Selenium tools out there, WebDriver IO is written entirely in JavaScript. It's also not restricted to just Selenium as support for the Chrome DevTools protocol, which we'll talk about later, was recently added. 
This means you can use WebDriver IO without installing Java or running Selenium. Like I said, I always thought browser automation meant figuring out how to get some complex Java app running. There's also the Selenium IDE, but writing tests through page recordings reminded me too much of WYSIWYG editors like Microsoft Front Page, and you're going to have to look that up if you weren't doing web development in the early 2000s. Instead, WebDriver IO lets me write in a language I'm familiar with and integrates with the same testing tools I use for unit tests. As a developer, the mental switch from writing the functionality to writing the test code requires minimal effort since it's all just JavaScript. I love that. The other great thing, and this is more to credit WebDriver than WebDriver IO, and there is a difference between those two, and we're going to talk about that later. Well, it's that I can use advanced CSS selectors to find elements. XPath scares me for no good reason. Something about the slashes instead of the spaces just chills my bones. But I don't have to learn XPath. Using WebDriver IO, I simply pass in my familiar CSS selectors, and it knows exactly what I'm talking about. I believe front-end developers should write tests for their own code, and WebDriver IO makes it incredibly easy. I always felt held back when writing tests in PhantomJS, knowing that it could never validate functionality in popular but buggy browsers like IE. But because WebDriver IO has built-in support for Selenium, I'm able to run my tests in all sorts of browsers. Selenium is an incredibly robust platform and an industry leader for writing browser automation. WebDriver IO stands on the shoulders of giants by piggybacking on top of Selenium. All the great things about Selenium are available without the overhead of writing Java-based tests. The commands you use in your WebDriver IO tests are concise and common sense. What I mean is, WebDriver IO doesn't make you write code to connect two parts together that are obviously meant for each other. For example, if I want to click a button via a normal Selenium script, I have to use two commands one to get the element, and another to click it. Why? It's obvious that if I want to click something, I'm going to need to identify it. WebDriver IO simplifies the click command by accepting the element selector right into the element command, then converts that into two WebDriver actions needed. That means instead of writing element by id submit.click, I can just write submit.click. It's much less mind-numbing repetition when writing tests. Speaking of simple, I love how WebDriver IO integrates into Selenium. Instead of creating its own Selenium or WebDriver implementation, it uses a common REST API that Selenium 2.0 provides. If you haven't worked with API endpoints before, this may not make sense. But don't worry, this isn't necessary to understand, but if you are interested, here's how it goes. WebDriver IO sees you want to run a command, say get URL, it takes that command converts that into the request to the Selenium or WebDriver server. The Selenium server processes the request and returns the result to WebDriver IO, which then returns the found URL to your code. Most of WebDriver IO is made up of these small commands living in their own separate small file. This means that updates are easier and integration into cloud services like Sauce Labs or BrowserStack are incredibly simple. Too many tools out there try to reinvent the wheel, and I'm glad WebDriver IO keeps it simple and uses what is already out there. This in turn helps me easily understand what's going on under the hood. As someone who has spent a considerable portion of their career working for large organizations, it's important to me that the tools I'm using are easily extendable. I'll have custom needs and will want to write my own functionality. WebDriver IO does a great job at this in two ways. There are many commands available by default via WebDriver IO, but there are times when you want to write a custom command just for your application. WebDriver IO makes this really easy. Just call the add command function and pass in your custom steps. Here's an example from the docs. Now, anytime I want to use both the URL and the title in my test, I've got a single command available to get that data. With the version 4 release of WebDriver IO, they've introduced a new pattern for writing page objects. For those unfamiliar with the term, page objects are a way of representing actions on the page or component. Rather than repeating the same selector across your entire test suite for a common page element, you can write a page object to reference that component. Then, in your test, request what you need from the page object and it handles it for you. This helps your test be more maintainable and easier to read. 
the more maintainable because updating selections and actions occur in a single file. When a simple HTML change to the login breaks half your tests, you don't have to find every reference to that selector in your code. You only have to update the login page object and you're ready to go again. It's also easier to read because tests become less about the specific implementation of a page and more about what the page does. For example, say we need to log into our website for most of our tests. Without page objects, all tests would begin with that login code. With page objects, that can become a much simpler command. No reference to specific selectors, no knowledge of URLs, just self-documenting steps that read out more like instructions than code. Now, page objects aren't a new idea that WebDriver.io introduced, but the way they set it up to use plain JavaScript objects is brilliant. There's no external libraries or custom domain language to understand. It's just JavaScript and a little bit of prototypical inheritance. So I wouldn't really call myself a real software tester. I'm far too clumsy to be put in charge of ensuring a bug-free launch. But I can't help but love what WebDriver.io provides me. And I'm a fan of what's going on in the project and its future. Hopefully this course helps you feel the same way.